What is happening fishers? Today I'm here with Breen Avis, local angler guys, and he is going to assist us with Dean's bluefish special fishing rod. He's damaged his top eye um, because he's a terrible fisherman guys. So today Breen is going to assist us and show us how to replace this top eye and how he fixes it. But first off Breen, how did you get into fixing fishing rods? Well, I used to do it for just years. My grandfather started it, then my father took over, and then I took over from him. So the machine that I use is actually still originally what my grandfather bought. Awesome. Um, so yeah, guys, we've had quite a tour of this place. So Breen's got molds for sinkers. He's got, you know, everything that I could possibly think of from behind the scenes from an angling world and uh, besides this fishing rod we're also going to be putting out another video where Breen's going to be showing us his prawn pumps that he makes so if you guys are needing any rod repairs done I'm going to leave Breen's number in the description and you guys are more than welcome to give him a call so anyway guys we're going to get this video started Breen is going to show us how it's done, and until then, I'll check in with you all later. Cheers! What's happening, fishers? We're back again. So, we're going to be changing the stip R on Dean's top rod that he has broken. So, I will be showing you guys how I cut it off and be putting a new one on. Let's get going. Okay, so we'll be cutting this band off without nicking the rod, guys. If you nick the rod, the rod is tickets. And to repair it can be done, but it will never have the same tip action. So that's why it's always very good to be careful with your rods. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, so there we have it. That should do the job. Now, to get it off. Can get quite hot sometimes. So if you do it, I would suggest that you use a pliers or something. Stripping of the rod always takes longer than actually redoing the rod. There it comes. So there we go. You can see tips all nice and clean. No nicks on it. Okay, now time to put the new tip on. There it is. So all we do is we just apply a bit of glue to hold that tip out on and then we bind it and then after the bind we put some glue over the bind okay so 
it's always best to push some in and not just rub it on the rod so that we know there's definitely glue on the tip not that the tip I just pushes the glue off so yeah what I'm doing I'm just heating the tip up so that glue can melt and then just slide it on then what we have to do before we put the band on we have to make sure that it's nice and straight Yeah, that looks good. Okay, yeah, now we're going to get some black cotton and I'm going to be heating it up. Okay, yeah, let's just trim the last piece off. Make sure it's nice and clean. Because if there's any glue or old cotton, you're not going to get a perfect band. So the last thing we want is any old glue or cotton. Yeah. so you can do this by machine uh, I have got another motor that's connected to my machine that I could do it by machine but I prefer to do it by hand and not with the machine because if you do one wrong move on the machine you're going to be cutting that whole band off and redoing it again. Okay, so what I got here, I call this the pull through. So the pull through will go under the line which you'll be binding on just so that you can finish it. So there we go. I'll put that through. This on us here, pull that, and then let that go, and that goes through. And that way, your band is nice and secure, never come loose. So now I'm going to get the edging cotton just to add onto that black. So this edging cotton is very thin, likes to snap very easy, but really gives a great finish to the rod. And it's all the same procedure, also gets a pull through, but can snap very much easier. So when you pull it, just be more careful. Ok, 
fair. So that's a pull through. And you just cut this tail off. And yeah, that's basically it. Then I like to just burn the edges so that when you glue it, there's no points. Which will give you a nice smooth finish. And yeah, that is the tip I on. And the rest of the eyes, all basically the same thing. Just that you don't put glue on. You'll just put a piece of sellotape just to hold the eye down and then you start binding and the same procedure just put your pull through over before you're gonna finish it off and pull it and that will be it okay so guys the glue that I use it's two glues which will obviously be your glue and your hardener so you have to have the exact amount so if you're pulling one mole from one you have to pull one mole from both or two moles or how much ever you need but it has to be the same so I like to use a syringe that's got the marking on so that it's exactly correct and then I push it out just into any container so that I can mix it I'll show you guys now how I mix it and then I apply that on the rod and then it goes into the machine and it tw turns for 12 hours in order to dry can be 8 to 12, but I prefer 12, then I know it's dried. But if you are half a mole out on your glue, it's not going to dry. So it has to be exact, guys. Let me show you how it's done. And then another thing that I like is it's got a red and a black lid. So my syringe, I've got a white piece and a black piece. So I know which one goes to which. Because you don't want to get that mixed. If you do, it's going to go rock hard. Yeah. So there I've got a half a mole. Because it's only for one R. So you don't want too much. Okay, so you push the two into each other and then you can use practically anything, a piece of wood, a piece of metal and you just mix it and then it will be right to put on. So all I'm doing is I'm just mixing the two into each other. And then it's always good to let it stand. If you apply it on straight away, it then sometimes takes longer to dry. But don't let it stand too long, because then it will go very thick, and you'll battle to put it on the eyes. So yeah, we'll leave that like that. And then we'll put that on now. Now, let me show you another rod that I did. Also Bluefish 13 foot special. That's it there. So that is the finished product. And there's another eye on this one. This is a centerpiece. Unfortunately at the moment we can't get the black K series. Only the silver. So if your K series needs replaced, we'll only be able to do it in silver for now. Okay, so guys, my machine is a very, very old machine, so I like to put some masking tape on just to prevent any damages to the rod and yeah, then that will be perfectly set in the machine. Like I mentioned earlier, this machine was what my grandfather originally built. And I have done no modifications on it. The bearings, whatever is in this machine, is still originally from when my grandfather had modified it to be a rod building machine. 
So, yeah. Okay. Let's work some there. So this is all just to hold the rod in place, that it doesn't jump anywhere. Because what happens is if you don't put that masking tape, the carpet that's there gives a bit of a carpet burn to the rod so with the masking tape there is no harm done to the rod at all that's just to hold the rope in place that it doesn't catch on the arm Then I like to do one more final inspection before I put the glue on to make sure that all the R's are in line because sometimes there is that possibility of bumping it or something and that R moves a little bit. Okay, that is spot on. So now I like to give the glue one last turn. Just to make sure. And then with a very fine, small art brush is what I put the glue on with. Okay, that's the glue. Now all I do is I keep turning it while I go to go put my machine on it. And there it turns. So yes, now I let it turn for 12 hours and I like to check it within like the 30 minutes or so, it's first 30 minutes to make sure there's no bubbles or it hasn't soaked in that there's a dry patch or anything, that it's nice and smooth. So, yeah, there it is. And, yeah, I've been doing rods for a long, long time. I can't even tell you, I never really thought that it would carry on like this. So, I never think the time on it. I never checked when I started or anything. But, yeah, it's been a family generation that's passed down. I'll be hopefully passing it on to my daughter, on to my brother's son, and hopefully they can carry the generation down to continue doing rods for you guys. That's it. Lekker. Shot fishers. Enjoy. Tight lines. Cheers.